Tobago, an island blessed in many ways. Its rich history, strong culture and picturesque landscapes. Also unique in its blessing is its human resource. People who have taken their God-given skills, turning them into business ventures. We are here to explore them. You're not fully independent until you're able to feed yourself. This is the motto by which people involved in agriculture live. In Tobago, there are such people who, through the ups and downs and ins and outs of daily routines, find the zeal to plant the seeds that will in due time bring fruits. While some use the sound of the pre-dawn showers as comfort to catch their last bit of night rests, others are up and are already to the task of completing the mission of the day. Among those people are the team of men who make up the company to Bay Grow. Their mission today is to put just over 4,000 cucumber seedlings to the ground. Though they may live different lifestyles and walk different career paths, these sons of the soil are bound by their love for agriculture. Growing up as a kid, I didn't do much agriculture. My father used to do a little thing in the, um, in the back, but um, I wasn't here for a while and I came back and I met up with these guys and that's when I really got into the agriculture. When I was smaller, we used to mine chicken. As a child growing up, you know, we was always around agriculture, you know. Um, you know, we used to, I used to mine like about 30, 30, 40 chickens at one time. Um, as a child growing up, it was, a, it was a tour for my parents. I mean, I didn't really have a choice then, really. When he was able to make a choice, Ricardo and his friends chose agriculture and the name to Tobago. The interest really is to encourage agriculture in Tobago, really, you know, to so really bring back that rich agricultural history back to Tobago, you know. So, um, with the name Tobago, um, we, I mean, of, you know, Tobago being the most common name there, really, you know, and um, it's all about growing uh, produce, you know, so that's how the name really came up, you know. Ricardo's job positions him to view firsthand the agricultural produce that is imported to the island on almost a daily basis. This fans the flame of the Big Rose desire to put better structure in place that would see the company cultivate larger areas of land for greater harvesting. In addition to agriculture, Tobago also conducts livestock farming. We have um, a few ducks, we have some uh, goats, uh, some sheep. Um, you know, we do plan to branch off eventually into more uh, a larger um, livestock. One of the animals recently gave birth. The team is on call. They are about to make an emergency run to the farm to check on the sheep. This is just me going back up to make sure that everything is okay with them, you know, and to, to spray the, the mother with the anti-fungal um, spray to prevent any bacteria or any um, infections or anything like that, you know. Thankfully, the animals, mother and young, are fine. Agriculture is hard work and plenty hands are needed if the garden is to bear fruit. For this reason, Tobago have teamed up with other agencies to conduct sessions that would allow for the succession of farmers. We had partner with the Rotary um, of Tobago, and um, yeah, we had all of the, the cane, we did the hydroponics, we did um, irrigation system, the plant, the reef. I mean, it was quite rewarding. The, the idea really was to teach them the business side of agriculture, because um, it's very hard to find workers too. Yeah? Um, but. You know, we are always wondering why nobody, so you know, so we really targeted the age between four to nine to see if we could really get them. And it, you know, there are a few of them who actually love the agriculture thing. So we really teach them the business side of it because every child understands money now these days, you know. Situated in the heart of one of Tobago's rich agricultural communities is Tobago, a company with a big heart for agriculture, whose aim is to close the gap on the amount of imported produce and to help nurture the next generation of farmers 
ensuring that while Tobago blossoms, Tobago bears fruit. With the evolution of time, people have found more contemporary ways of completing certain tasks. No longer do people use the joking board at the riverside to do their laundry, and very few people turn to the dirt oven for baking. In the same way, some people are no longer at the mercy of the sun to put their seeds to the ground. Do you believe that the same amount of terrestrial plants grown on a size of land that measures a lot can be grown in a greenhouse structure measuring 16 times 40 feet? This is the type of planting being done at Greenwave Gardens operated by owner Joel Jofield. This method of growing plants without soil by using mineral nutrient solutions is called hydroponics. Before I started doing agriculture, I used to play football competitive with Phoenix and we went to Trinidad to play a game and a friend who was on a trip with us took us to see a hydroponic setup in Trinidad. And while we were talking to the farmer there, the cost to set up the garden was out of our reach at the point in time. So I took the idea and grew with it, run with it a little and got the funds from ADB and then I started small and kept growing. There was no stopping the growth of Greenwave Gardens after purposeful seeds were planted by Joel. Though hydroponic farming may be regarded by many as a new idea, it actually has been in existence in different parts of the world for quite some time. Joel dabbled in NFT or nutrient film technique. That's where you have a thin film of water around the roots of the plant and the plant will keep using the water and the nutrients in the water to grow until they mature. But made the decision to switch to another method of hydroponic that is for green wave gardens, blossoming get the crops coming a lot faster because of the way that it is grown. Normally if you put it in the ground, the plant would only grow when it have access to the nutrients. The soil has to be wet for it to feed. But with this year, it always, the soil is always moist, so the plant would be feeding constantly. They don't really wilt because they always have access to water. The conventional farming, digging dirt and wetting either manual or with sprinklers, they use a lot of water and use a lot of space as well. If you see in this setup here, you see in four pots, four spaces in one pot, right? And you have 10 pots here, so there's 40 spaces in about one square foot of space. So you're planting a lot more crops versus the conventional farming where you had to put on. 40 square foot of crops to get the same amount of the same. So you save a lot of space, a lot of water, and a lot of time. The United States of America, Canada, the Netherlands, China, England, Australia, Russia, Italy, Spain, and Israel are some countries that have embraced hydroponic farming as being crucial for achieving food security. Joel of Greenwave Gardens in Tobago has done same by embracing innovation to change the face of agriculture on the island. He believes that Tobago can return to the status it once had prior to Hurricane Flora in 1963. That situation at the end now only happened because of that. The hurricane destroyed the agricultural sector and then returned to tourism and the oil sector from Trinidad helped to boost Tobago. Um, Right now, we don't have much farmers planting. We have much of the lands either unoccupied or overgrown. And the amount of time and resources that it would take to bring back the land to a farmable state, it would be a lot of work needs to go into. Wanting no one who desires to get into hydroponics left behind, Joel shares advice on receiving aid from agencies such as Agricultural Development Bank, ADB, based on his own experience. When you go for funding, your business plan needs to be in order. You can't be going for a loan for say ten, twenty thousand dollars and your plan only showing that you could make five thousand dollars at the end of your um, stipulated time period that you wouldn't really get through with your loan for that. So 
I would suggest you get a comprehensive business plan, you do your market search so that you plant crops that you would get sold quickly and for a premium price so you could profit a lot from it. Once a footballer, Joel has switched up his game plan playing with the Green Wave team. He is putting in the work in a field that will allow not just himself but his family, community and island to grow by learning and implementing innovative methods of growing quality crops in a huge amount. He is well on his way to scoring a major goal for Green Wave Gardens and for Tobago. When it comes to agriculture, Tobago experienced both sides of the spectrum. Coming down the years in history, it was a rich agricultural land. Its people were able to feed themselves and others. This has changed to the point where the island now imports most of its agricultural produce. These lads are answering the call by planting seeds that would ensure the residents and visitors to the island of Tobago have the top of three basic human needs, food, food, 